It was hot, too hot. The kind of heat that embraces you so tightly, the energy drains out of you. That sort of heat that bears down like an unseen burden and demands you take the day off fundling, a glass of the cool stuff tinkling with ice cubes. The thing is, there's a cold lump of plastic in my hand, a key fob embossed with the distinctive image of a galloping horse. It's my ticket to a dream drive behind the wheel of the most evocative and iconic nameplates in automotive history, a Ford Mustang. For well over half a century, this has been the coolest ride on the block. It features in more movies and TV shows, not to mention social media posts, than any other car. From Nicolas Cage's Eleanor in Gone in 60 Seconds, to Will Smith Shelby in I Am Legend, to James Bond's Mach 1 in Diamonds Are Forever. But there's one movie appearance, a mesmerizing 10 minute sequence that rightfully claims the unchallenged crown of best movie chase ever. Featuring a 1968 Ford Mustang 390 GT fastback driven by Steve McQueen's character, Lieutenant Frank Bullitt in the movie Bullitt. One of the coolest actors of all time in the undisputed coolest car of all time in one heck of a cool car chase. It was easy to be cynical about this brand new Mustang resplendent in a dark shade of the distinctive signature Highland Green paint finish of the movie car, complete with the black torque thrust wheels and a blacked out grill minus the galloping horse logo that normally lives there, just like on the 1968 original as specified by McQueen. And like his car, this one too has been beefed up, it's stiffer, gets a few extra ponies under the long bonnet housing that well proven Coyote V8 5 liter engine, and just as McQueen would insist on shifting his own gears, so this bullet edition comes only with the choice of a 6 speed manual complete with the white cue ball shift knob. Screw the heat, I just had to hit the streets in this thing and besides, you want cool? Well there ain't nothing cooler on sale new than a bullet edition Mustang. Ever since the Retro Revival Mustang arrived in 2005, it's been a sales super hit. And I don't just mean in America, officially it was launched in Europe in 2015 and it's been racking up the sales everywhere, including for example in Germany where it beat the 911 on its home turf. This is the world's best-selling sports car and even here in Europe we're not buying the four-cylinder EcoBoost, no, most of us are buying the V8s, most of us are buying them in manual and most of us are buying them as the fastback. It still looks a million dollars but it doesn't cost it. The V8 uh, starts from 43,000 pounds. This of course the bullet edition starts from 49,000 pounds. This actual car has magnarized suspension which is an extra 1,600 pounds. Should you get that? Well this does have the most sophisticated suspension a Stang has ever had but we don't have the best roads in the world. They can be a little bit bumpy and if Magna Ride is good enough for Ferrari, then hey, why not? For another 1600, I say, yeah, go for it. Like I said, this Mustang looks magnificent. Its lines ooze charisma. It's sleek, powerful and imposing. I reckon McQueen would definitely approve of this car. And of course, the blacked out grill, the black torque thrust wheels, the darker shade of Highland Green on this car is all continuity correct subtlety in divine extravagance. Now this isn't the biggest muscle car, that honor goes to the Dodge Challenger. I have driven lots of Mustangs, including classic ones, 
Roush Mustang, Shelby's, and of course, plenty of these. I've never really felt that they were big cars until I drove one here in the UK. It seems to have grown on British roads. It's like an American abroad. It's loud and it's big, but you know what? You'd have a drink with it, right? So <laughs> that's the sort of car it is. Anyway, it is in fact as long as an Aston Martin DB11 and as wide as a Jaguar F-Type. So around town, you, you have to tread a bit warily and you have to poke your nose out a little bit gingerly. But I have to say, if they don't see you coming, they'll certainly hear you coming, particularly if you've got the sports exhaust on, which of course I always keep on because why not? So let's take this for a little run. Let's start it up. Got the window open. So deep thrummy note straight away. Don't know if you can hear that, but definitely you know that you're on a V8. But that's in normal mode. And uh, I've got it in my mode. So if I put it into my mode, my mode, I've got the exhaust. That wasn't me, that was a bike. That was a Harley actually. That, that, that's now in my mode. In my mode, the exhaust is set to sport. A little louder, a little deeper, a little thrummier. So uh, let's close the window and let's let's start off and let's leave in my mode because my mode is basically everything in normal except the sport exhaust is on uh, and the steering is in sport which is the way I prefer it um, because I like a little bit of heft and a bit of meat to my steering so uh, let's go for it That's 6,000 rpm I changed up let's go further wow I mean you know this car pulls 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 Initially, so there's a little bit of a, a thing about it where it initially will pull very quickly. So around town, you have to be a little bit gingerly uh, and a little bit careful on the throttle as you're moving off because you, you could pounce all of a sudden. Remember, it's got, you know, 459 brake horsepower. Um, and then there's a little bit of a gap. This is typical of the engine. And I say gap, I mean like, you know, very minor. And then, of course, at the top end, then you get performance again. So where it really starts to pull like a... You know, like this is in third gear. There goes the staccato rhythm from the V8 and there it starts to pull. Now, it's a it's very easy change. Um, it's a prop, it's properly defined. It's obviously a six speed H pattern gearbox. Now, you will notice there and you will think, wow, he's pretty good at that whole uh, heel and throw th throttle brippy thing, right? Um, I'd like to claim the credit for the uh, Steve McQueen style uh, downshifts, but the reality is that that would not be true because, in fact, this thing is now equipped with rev matching. And uh, you can turn the rev matching off um, from, the, uh, from the settings in here, so you can go back to uh, doing it yourself. And it is possible to do it yourself I find it a little bit difficult because of the spacing of the pedal depending on what shoe I've got on Converse's I've got on now is a little bit a little bit more possible but some people might find it a little difficult so actually that feature of having the rev matching is quite handy the bullet Mustang brings the movie soundtrack to our motoring lives that we all crave the only thing missing is the Lalo Schifrin's chill score from the movie itself the ride also now we've got it in normal mode and in normal mode, the ride is actually fantastic. Around town, where the roads are a bit more bumpy and rutty, um, it copes with them very well. It does a very good job of just smoothing everything over and uh, just keeping it nice and refined and comfortable. So there, I think it does really, really well. Now let's switch it into one more mode up, and then that will take it into Sport Plus, in which case the suspension will now go into sports as well. Now remember, this car is fitted with a 1600 pound option, the Magna Ride suspension, um, which is a really good setup. And you know, it's, it's the same system they use on Ferraris, for example, and you know, Chevrolet has used it for a long time on the Corvette and what have you. And um, you know, there it works uh, really, really well in adjusting the, the, the dampers. I mean, even now that it's in sports setting, I mean, you can hear it a little bit more but you can't necessarily feel it. Be firm and decisive and you'll never miss a gear. And the Brembo brakes are strong and reassuring despite the heft of this thing. And you certainly don't have to make any excuses for the handling. For a microsecond, the nose may seem hesitant to respond, but then it changes direction sharply and doesn't lollop or bounce around like McQueen's car did in the film. 
You can do burnouts and power slides to your heart's content, but forget what you've been told about muscle cars. This thing is solid and planted with great grip and poise. Oh, and there we go. Oh. You just gotta trust the grip. The nose will, you feel like the nose is running wide, but it's not. It's just, you know, needing a little bit of space, especially when there's a big lorry coming the other way on a small lane. But the gear changes are so precise. It just sounds tremendous. You really need to find space to let it stretch its legs. That's the only problem with this car, is that um, you barely got going and then you're up against somebody or there's somebody in front of you or something like that. And uh, that's where it's a little bit of a, a, an issue. Um, maybe I should have come out on a Sunday morning or something like that to do this. But the reality is driving it hard, driving it slow, driving it in town, driving it over a long distance, driving it around, wherever you're doing it, wherever you are, you're just, you're just feeling great about it. You know, that's, that's the thing about it is that you feel good. You feel special in this car. And I think that is worth more than anything else. You know, you feel like you've bought something special, you feel like you're driving something special, and you feel special. And I think that accounts for more than anything else. And in that sense, you know, I mean, I have driven old Mustangs, new Mustangs, classic recreation Mustang. I've driven Shelby's, I've driven the Roush, and the performance on those is absolutely phenomenal. But you don't need that, but certainly in the UK, I mean, this 500 horsepower is actually all you're ever going to need. You could easily get by with the, with the, with the four-cylinder EcoBoost, but, you know, it's a Mustang. Why would you want that? And I think that's been proven by the fact that, you know, whereas they, Ford may have thought that European sales would be dominated by the four-cylinder EcoBoost, boost engine the reality is that everybody buys the v8s because why would you not buy a v8 i mean that's basically what this car is all about you know and you'll just put up with the fuel economy ah yes i was going to talk about the fuel economy so uh, around town i've been getting something like 15 or so uh out of town it improved a little bit to about 20 i mean this longer run that i've been doing up to 20 i would say that if you drive it economically over time and with a fair bit of long distances included you'd probably get it up to about 25 or so um I reckon it's probably around a 50 pound tank, 50 pound sterlings to fill it up. So that's what you're looking at. And uh, you will need to be uh, on friendly terms with your local petrol station because you will find yourself there quite often. So get a loyalty card or whatever I think um, might be a good idea to do. So there you go. The mirrors are a little small though. They fit with the style of the original. McQueen's car only had one mirror and that sloping fastback rear could restrict visibility, but it is equipped with a reversing camera and rear cross traffic alert. So really a fantastic cruiser. I've cruised up the M1 here. It's got active cruise control. So it does the whole distance sensing thing. You can set it and forget it. It's brilliant. So, you know, I put it in sixth gear. The wonderful thing about it, the real sort of puzzle that I wanted to solve, particularly with this drive and this review, because like I said, I've reviewed Mustangs so often in the past. And to be honest, this Mustang is pretty faithful to how they drive and feel. And as ever, it's just a further testament to what's been happening over the evolution of Mustangs anyway, which is that they've just been getting more and more refined, better. I mean, there's no, there's no squeaks, there's no rattles, nothing in this car. It's solid. It feels solid. Everything feels nice to touch. Everything works. The Apple CarPlay, the digital, full digital screen. It's just getting more refined and better than it's ever been. The interior is nice, as nice as it's ever been. Probably the best that it's ever been. So. The real puzzle for me was not really, is this car any good? I know it's good, I already love it. What I wanted to resolve was that does it work in the UK? You know, it's a muscle car. And I think that aside from the fact that it's a thirsty bugger, my conclusion is, you know, from the uh, luxury of reclining in these wonderful Recaro sports seats is that yes, it does. And it works on multiple levels. It works on the same level that it would anywhere else, i.e. it's a muscle car and it feels like one and it goes like one, but with a fair degree of very, very uh, competent dynamic ability to thrown in, excellent uh, setup for the steering, for the suspension, the Magna Ride suspension, particularly on this car. And of course, you've got the line lock if you want to be a hooligan or if you want to show off to your mates or you're at the drag strip. And if you are at the drag strip, it's got drag strip mode. If you want to take it to track, you can do that as well. It's got track mode. Uh, and of course, you can turn the traction off completely if you wanted to. I haven't, but you can. Um, so it does all of that. It has all of that element. 
it's usable enough in the UK because it just about works uh, around town. Um, I think, like I said, the bigger muscle cars than this might struggle. Uh, the Camaro might be all right, actually. The Camaro is about this size or smaller, so that might be all right. The Challenger would be a struggle, but this one just works fine. Then there's another element to it, which is that it, the, the superstar quality that Mustangs give you anyway is just ratcheted up to yet another level driving this car here in the UK suddenly you feel even more special because not everybody's got one not everybody will have one but a lot of people know what it is and a lot of people relate to it and a lot of people are familiar with the bullet theme of this car and they just clock the badge on the back sometimes it's also quite discreet it's a beautiful looking car with that blacked out grille those fantastic black torque thrust uh, wheels that it's got on there it's got the right stance it's got the right look I just absolutely adore this car. Is it worth 49,000 pounds? Hell yeah, it is. Damn right it is. And keep some money back for the fuel as well because you're going to be paying quite a bit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest, I've got to admit bias, I absolutely adore this thing, I love this car and I would just have one, I would have one today. So there is my less than independently unbiased verdict, I adore the Bullet Mustang, I think it's the best of the breed, if you're going to get a Mustang and you can stretch to it, get this one, if you can't, get a Mustang anyway because they're magnificent. Anyway, that's our review on the Bullet Mustang here in UK spec in the UK, I hope you enjoyed that, thanks so much for watching, make sure that you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy and you follow me on social media channels, just search for hashtag, you can see it on my hat, brown car guy and of course subscribe to browncarguy.com. If you enjoy these videos then please consider supporting me on patreon.com forward slash Shazad Sheikh and there you'll find some exclusive content and maybe some goodies like this hat. Go check it out. If you can't do that no problem please continue to like, share, comment and subscribe. That is so much appreciated and I'll see you all again in the next one.